Hi and welcome back to a new video. Already in the launch video, I promised that we did some power target testing. Power target refers to how much power the card can consume. Stock condition 100% power target means that the card can consume 575 watts mainly across the 12 volt high power cable. And then there are multiple tools such as the NVIDIA driver, MSI Afterburner, Asus GPU Tweak, where you can alter the power target. For example, you can increase it for overclocking to allow the card to pull more power, or you can also decrease it. That's also something we showed in the RTX 4090 launch video to make a card more efficient. And that's what we will try in today's video. Hetzen is expanding its offering with the new object storage. High performance, scalable and S3 compatible for storing unstructured data starting at just $599 per month. With hundreds of thousands of servers, Hetzner is one of Europe's leading hosting providers and operates state-of-the-art data centers in Nuremberg, Falkenstein and Helsinki. The new storage solution is perfect for data-intensive applications offering maximum flexibility. It allows you to securely store and manage massive amounts of data in self-contained environments known as buckets according to your needs. All of this is powered by Hetzner's own ES server systems. The EX130 dedicated server serves as the base for this. And the special feature here is that a server consists of three units, the EX130 and two units with HDDs. Find out more in the link below. Especially considering that the 5090 is still running off a single 12 volt high power connector. Well, to be clear, Nvidia also said it's the 12 volt 2x6, so it's the updated 12 volt high power with shorter sense pins. According to Nvidia, this should make it easier to prevent user errors, so it's easier to detect if the, yeah, the cable was fully plugged in or not. And according to Nvidia, they consider this issue resolved with this change, and we will see if this is gonna be enough or not. So that's something time will tell, at least at the point of shooting this video, because I also saw this question multiple times under my video. At least I also saw this question multiple times under my launch video. I'm not aware of a card that currently comes with two of those connectors. So that is something I just don't know yet if we will see that or not. But the power target can be an option to decrease the load on the cable. You could also do this using the NVIDIA app, at least in theory. If you go to system and performance, you can find power maximum and voltage maximum. This is in percent, both of them. But you can see if I try to alter this, maximum is 104%. It tells me there was a problem, try again later. and it, it's like, it doesn't matter where I go to, it's always doing that. And while doing my testing, I had it when I was trying to alter it in the NVIDIA app that my card was locked at 1100 megahertz. So something seems to be wrong with this setting. That's why we will just not use the NVIDIA app. Running through DMARC Speedway in the windowed mode, it is a little bit less low than running it full screen. You can see board power draw 530, 540, even sometimes 550. This equals to 92 to up to 95% TDP, which means that even if we run this in full screen modes, just increasing the TDP might not directly result in more performance. The 104% result in the card having a TDP of 575 watts, resulting only coming with a single 12 volt high power connector, which is rated at 600 watts. If we go plus 4%, this results in 598 watts. If we go to 105, then it would already exceed the specs of the connector, or at least what Nvidia rated it for. And that's why we are here with only 4% that is possible for at least the increase without any kind of modifications. And keeping in mind that typically if we increase the power target, we are running in a region where it's getting less, e less efficient. So the expected performance gain might be less than 4%, maybe only 2 or 3%. So first we're running 3D Mark Speedway again, this time in full screen mode, so it's loading the card correctly. The result is 143.1 FPS, and if we check in GPU-Z, the board power draw was typically between 520 and like 550 watts, and this results in a TDP not always hitting the 100%. So you can see something between 92, 94. GPU clock, 2400, memory clock, 1400. And we're now using GPU tweak to increase it to 104%. And we're running a speedway again, already finished. It didn't really increase. 143.7, that's a 0.6 increment. But you have to keep in mind that there's always some fluctuation. Usually I run at least three or five times and make an average for my benchmarking. But showing this in the video, obviously only showing one run. But you can see it doesn't really change 
GPU clock, for example, obviously doesn't change memory clock. So just increasing the power target doesn't seem to have an effect, as you can see here. Quick jump into overclocking, plus 200 megahertz on the GPU should result in 2600 megahertz. And we will check how this impacts both performance and power consumption. And indeed, it slightly increases performance, 147 FPS, because it's also increased GPU clock. At this point, I didn't have time to check what my max on GPU core and GPU memory is. But for even this type of small or tiny overclock, the increase in power consumption or TDP is, is necessary. You can see sometimes it just crosses the 100% mark, like here. And if we check in the power, board power draw, then you can also see sometimes yeah, hitting like 580 watts. Even 2700 megahertz worked on my card, resulting in almost 150 FPS. But now we can see even more spikes above the 100% TDP mark. With this quick tweaking and increasing power target to 104, increasing GPU clock, we could gain another like 4% in performance. I don't want to spend too much time overclocking the Founders Edition. That's something I still want to do with some of the partner cards, like an Astral, see if they maybe with more cooling or different, I don't know what kind of options they will have, figure out if we can tune them a little bit more. But what I'm interested in right now is trying to make this card more efficient. That is something we tried with the 4090 review, going down in 10% steps from 100% even down to 50% and this drastically increased the efficiency of the card. I then realized starting my test that we can't go as low anymore. The lowest we can go is 70% power target, so that's a minus of 30%. And these 70% we will quickly run through 3 Mark. As expected, the performance is lower with 127 FPS. This is still roughly 90% of the stock performance. And as expected, the power draw is much lower. We drop it down to about 400 watts. I'm not sure why Nvidia doesn't allow going lower than minus 30%. Then again, I'm not quite sure how relevant this is, how many people would buy a 5090 and then just go minus 50% power target. It's something I would like have to test. It's something I wanted to test, but it's not really a problem. I performed some clean runs again. So now again, 3D Mark Speedway, 90% power target results in 7% less power draw. We reduce it from 551 watts to 511 watts under load. This almost keeps the performance at the same level. We are decreasing it from 146 to 144. That is a 1.6% difference. If we decrease it to 80% power target, the power consumption is now 460 watts, but the performance is still quite strong with 138 FPS. This means we're saving 17% in power draw and only lose 5% in performance. Going back to the lowest setting of 70% that I already showed to you, we are roughly on the same level as a 4090 when it comes to its stock power draw. Both are consuming about 400 watts under load. With the 70% power target on the 5090, we are losing 12% performance, but we're also saving 27% in power consumption. The condition of lowering this to 70% power target brings it to the 4090 level, as I just said. And in this condition, it is interesting because at the same power draw, the 5090 is 27% faster. There we have it again, the 27%. But how does this translate to gaming? In Assassin's Creed Mirage, we are dropping the power consumption from 376 to 330, which means that we are saving 13%, while the performance only drops by 5%. It is much more impressive in Cyberpunk though. Natively rendered, we are only losing 7%, while we are saving quite a lot of power. We are dropping it from 518 watts to 402 watts. This means we are saving 22% in power consumption, while only losing 7% performance. Only in Star Wars Outlaws I could see an even bigger saving potential. We could save 26% in power consumption while we lost only 8% in performance. This means that the RGX 5090 with the 70% power target setting is actually more efficient and consuming less power than the RTX 4090 running stock. So we're saving 4% power while it's 16% faster. Isn't that quite cool? Very similar to the RDX 4090, it is the same kind of behavior, dropping the power target a little bit, at least the minus 10%, so going to 90% power target, can be very beneficial. So you only lose very little performance, maybe 3, 4, 5%, while you can save quite a lot of power. Even at the 90% can be up to 50 watts that you can save. And especially if you're going down to 70% power target, it makes the card a lot more efficient. And if you're looking into something like that, that might be interesting to you. 
I hope you enjoyed this video. See you next time. Bye-bye.